Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about ARPS again. If you remember a few months ago, I think two months ago now, I uploaded a video on making ARPS yourself with a rack that I made. And now I want to show you a different tool that you can use to make it even easier. Hello, I quickly wanted to say, if you want to support this channel, you can do so by listening to my music on Spotify or Apple Music, or by going to my website and looking at some of my products. There are even free ones that you can download uh, really easily. Alternatively, if you're interested in private lessons, I also provide those and all the information for that you can also find on my website. So before we get into that tool, I quickly want to do a recap on the MIDI rack that I made to show you kind of a little bit of a problem that there is with that, a little bit of a workaround that you need to do. And after that, I will show you this new tool, which makes it much, much easier. So here we are in the project that I showed in that previous tutorial. Here you can see the rack that we made. And if you recall, if you have seen that video, the way that it was set up is that you need to Write on your MIDI notes, then you put in the ARP, set your key and some other settings here as well. And then you can just play it and it will generate random sequences for you within that ARP. This is completely random, so there is no way to actually reproduce the same thing over and over again. If I play this multiple times, you'll hear we get a different melody every time. So what you needed to do to actually save a melody that you liked is that you would record it on a separate track. And then you can mess around, you can get whichever part that you want, whichever part that inspires you, and then you place that within the new track and then you can turn off the device and you have the ARP that you had. If you remember in the old tutorial we made this. Now obviously what would be ideal is to, if there is a tool where you can quickly set up a random sequence like that and then edit it a little bit and then just have it play automatically the same sequence every time. So for that reason I am introducing Stepic today which is a tool that was sent to me by their developers Device Meister. So full disclosure here I was giving this tool to use for free and they wanted me to do a video on that so that's what this video is. However I do want to say they don't have any creative control over what I actually say about the plugin. But we have been going back and forth a little bit on how I would improve. It's a little bit strange for me calling it a plugin because within Ableton, within the Ableton ecosystem, it's actually a Max for Life device loading a VST3 plugin, which allows it to have a little bit more options than with any other DAW. But it works perfectly fine outside of Ableton 2 and the core functionality works throughout every DAW in the sense that we're able to just generate ARPs and sequences with it, no problem. So here we are within the new project. This is the project that's loading Stepic. And what you will immediately see is that there's not actually a MIDI clip in here. There's no MIDI clips that are being used to actually trigger the sounds. But if I play this demo, and I'm going to play it all the way through here, so you can listen what you can actually do with this tool, you'll be able to hear that not only is there this, this ARP that is constantly evolving, but we're also triggering different elements to turn on and off again. So this is what we will be discussing today. Now let's have a look at the device itself. As I said, it is a Max for Life device. So you can see when we place it in here, this is the Stepic device. You can see it has its own custom interface that we can 
you know, do some minor tweaks to, but to actually open up the device itself and to start making the edits, you have to open it up like this. And then here you have the actual device. Now this is obviously set up with a pattern already in mind and you can see there's a lot of complex things going on. All of these sliders have been set. We have different patterns here that do different things and that are like interwoven in terms of when they go to the next pattern and stuff like that. But what I first want to talk about is just the basic setup. So we have two tabs that are of interest here. We have the sequencer tab where you place the actual notes and you modify any of the, the actual note data that is being sent to the plugin. And then you have the automation tab, which can be used to add additional automations or modulations to any parameter that you want. So I think the best way to actually show off this device is to actually start by setting up a new version of this ARP. So I'm quickly just going to turn this off so we have some space to work with. Let's put it here. And I'm going to start by adding a MIDI track, call it new, and then we can get started. So I'm just quickly going to load the Stepic device here, and I'm going to load a quick sound on that, which I'll quickly sound design, just a quick like plug. So we have something nice to listen to. So here we have the plug that I made just quickly. And now we're going to use Stepic to actually trigger it. So the way this works is that you're editing a pattern. You can see here you have the option to select 16 patterns. We'll start with pattern one for now. And you have some controls here for the pattern itself, some note controls, some scale controls that you can use. You can choose the different scale that you want. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of different options here. Let's say that I want to go into Frisian here and I'd like to go A sharp three, for example. Now what I can do is I can set the note length for this sequence. I want to use 16 notes and then I can start actually editing the sequence here. So what I can do is I can set the notes manually like this, which takes a little bit of time and you need to spend a lot of time actually listening to it. But what you can also do, and this is the nicest bit, is now that we have this part looped and we are able to play it, is we just press play. And as you can see, this button here allows us to randomize all of these faders together. Now what I can do if I want some stability within this melody is I say, okay, I want this note always here, this note always here, maybe I want this to be different. I can go in and I can start to edit some of these. So I'm gonna go one, four, and seven, and then from nine as well, we'll do like three like this to get a kind of standard one over eight dotted note rhythm as our baseline, and then all of the other notes are different. Now obviously you have more controls here as well. You have the octave that you can play with. I can set, for example, this one to be an octave lower and this one. Let's take some of those high notes and turn them down a little bit. And maybe for this last one, I want the octave to go higher again. So I'm actually going up by an octave here. Finally, there's the note duration. You can set different duration amounts. You can go like this. And again, I can use these buttons to randomize everything. Now you see we're running into a little bit of a problem where we have these very low durations, which aren't really nice to listen to. They're like too staccato in my opinion. So what I can do quickly here is I can modify all of these notes by just pushing them up a little bit and then it will just push all of the sliders up. I can push them down, I can push them up again. I can go left, I can go right. I have a lot of control over all of the sliders together. So you're basically able to edit the whole pattern as one, which is very, very powerful because it's very quick. Just to show you what I mean for this duration, if I don't like this duration here and I want to redo this, I can randomize, I can get a whole new set of durations and I can push them up a little bit again and maybe push them down, something like this. And now I have a new set of durations that is completely randomly generated, but will repeat every time that you play this pattern. So you can see this is a very powerful way to actually create your melodies and the, the real power comes in is that this is repeating. As I said, the problem with that last MIDI rack that I had is that you had to go through that process of recording and then you had to select the parts that you liked and have to arrange them in the actual arc that you want to use, which just takes a little bit of time to do and this takes away that time that you have to do that. 
But in my opinion, the coolest part is that you can basically randomize anything. Here you can see we have the randomized options here, which turns off the actual slider and inserts a randomized point in there uh, instead of the actual slider value. So it will just pick a random value here every time this gets played. Same with the octaves. I can take a random octave here. I can take a random duration on this one. I can set always go random here. And this has two modes. It has a it has the green mode, which will allow for consecutive steps. And then it has the purple mode, which does not allow for consecutive steps. So you have a lot of possibilities and options to actually pick from here. Another cool thing is that you can override some of the data that you see in here, the single note data with chord data, which is where this piano roll comes in. You can see I have the chord activated and I can just click two extra. And let's give this a long duration so you can hear. I could do the same here. We'll add the same chord, we'll add the same chord here just through all of these A hits that we have previously made. And now we have a chord here. Now let's say that you don't really like the ARP sound, you can just turn these off. You have to click twice on these. And you can see that this can also be used as like a chord sequence. So that's very, very cool. So now let's look into the modulation capabilities. Obviously you have the ability to use velocity here and you can use different velocities, for example, for the volume, which is very, very common. If I go in here and I set this to the velocity, you can hear that the velocity now changes the volume of the actual synth. And again, I can raise it if I want it to be louder overall. Then we can do something like this. But now let's say that I want to also use the mod wheel. You can see there is no mod wheel in here. But what you can do is you can go into the automation where we can assign something to the mod wheel. So let's go in here and switch this to MIDI CC. I'll talk a little bit about the live feature later because that's exclusive to Ableton Live. That's what I talked about before with the idea of this being a VST3 plugin loaded within a Max for Live file. Let's again set up a random modulation and I'm going to set this to CC1, which is the CC number for mod wheel. And then I can go in my synth and I can use the mod wheel to maybe change the filter cutoff a little bit. And again, I have control over randomization. I can set minimum and maximum in this case, which as you can see, changes the sliders. I have talked to the developer asking if there's a possibility that we have this min max value without it actually changing the sliders so that it preserves the spacing between the different nodes here. If I set this to zero and then back, you can see we have lost the random pattern that we just had. So it would be cool to have an option here where you can set a minimum and a maximum amount of modulation without it actually changing the levels between the modulation like it does now, where it's actually moving the sliders. Another feature that I ask for is to have an overall modulation amount here, where you can just set a percentage from zero to 100, which kind of works the same as in Serum, where you have an auxiliary modulation like this, or usually it's used with the macro, where this automation is multiplied by this one, and if it's at zero, obviously there's no modulation happening. And if it goes up all the way, it's 100%. This is 50% and you get the point here. So now let's say I want to do something a little bit more advanced. Say that I take a delay and I place this on here, just a simple echo. Let's set up some settings that make sense. We have something like that. Let's say that we don't want all of the notes to have the same input volume going into this delay. How would we do that? Let's open up Stepic and let's enable this second modulation line. And here you can see we are in live mode. So I can click this map and you can see it gives me 30 seconds. And I can just click the input and now you see it is mapped like you have, for example, with the, the LFO device here. If you know Max for Life, this LFO device also does this mapping. It's the same type of mapping. And that is what is powerful about this Stepic device here is that it allows you to use the Max for Life mapping. Now, as I mentioned before, this is a feature that is exclusive to Ableton Live. So in another DAW, 
you would need to use a different way. But as you can see, if I turn this on and I set it to MIDI CC, there's a whole bunch of different options that you can use to actually send out your modulation. And you can pick any one of these as your actual MIDI CC and then assign that using MIDI Learn to whatever parameter that you want to modulate. So let's just say we want something like this, where just these notes here that we set previously to the A are going to go into the delay. Now you can see we have a little bit of a problem where it goes too high, it goes to plus 40 dB as an input, which is obviously not what we want. So we use this max to just turn it all the way down. Let's say 65, something like that. And let's see where that lands us. 0 0.9 here. I can be as precise as I want. I can try to get it all the way to zero, but that doesn't need to be. And now you can see our input delay is actually responding to what is happening here. But now you might say, okay, that is all cool, but I want to use a different pattern. Let's say that I want to create a different pattern, but I also want to keep this pattern. And I kind of want to switch between them, maybe play around with how many times we play one of them and how many times we play the other one. What I can do is I can click store and then click number two. And as you can see, we're now in pattern number two. Pattern number one is highlighted to show that it was modified. And you can see we still have all of the same settings here. And now I can go in and I can change some of these melodies around. I can maybe say, okay, we'll go up an octave here as well. Something like that. Maybe let's take the note down a little bit and maybe change some of these around. Let's redo the velocity here. Let's redo the duration here. And again, I want to turn the duration up a little bit. Maybe something like that. And we can also re-randomize some of these modulations here, the first one, for example. And then again, I can use the max and the min to actually set the final values that I want. Now you obviously don't want to manually go from one pattern to the next, you want that to be automatic. So that's where you can use this one. And you can see we can set the next pattern, we can set a random pattern, so it will choose any of the activated patterns that you have randomly, or we can select a specific pattern that we want to switch to. So for this one, what I can do is I want pattern two, and then for this one, I want it to go back to pattern one. So now if we play it, you can hear it will switch between the two patterns automatically after a bar. I might say, okay, that's cool and all, but I want to modify one of the patterns while this is playing so I can actually listen to it. So let's say that I want to modify pattern number two. I can just press this hold here. To hold it there, it will stop it from actually changing. And once I'm done editing this pattern and I want it to go back to the actual loop, I just turn it off again and it will go back to the loop that we want. Now I might say, okay, that's nice and all, but what I really want is I want pattern one to repeat three times, and then I want pattern two to repeat once. What I can do then is I can set this bar count to three, and then it will repeat for three times this pattern, and then it will move on to pattern number two. And after that has been repeated once, it will move back into pattern number one. And here, obviously with the velocities, what I want to do is I want to turn them up a little bit so that we kind of hit the same volume as the other one, but now you should be able to hear that we have this really cool repeating pattern. But now you're like, okay, that is nice, but how do I actually start it and stop it? And that's done with this mute here. So what I can do is I can just turn this mute up and then once it's muted, it will no longer play. And then once it gets unmuted again, it will start to play. And I just select pattern one so that it starts from there and we'll hear that it starts to play as we want.
Now I might see that pattern two was repeated here and not there. In order to fix that, what we can do is we can change the mode to re-trigger and then it should be okay. Actually, what might happen here is that we need to start playing it from here instead of from there. Okay, that is strange. I don't know why that's not working right now. This might be something that I need to check with the developer on how this actually works. Maybe this is an issue with the specific release that I have because I still have a little bit of like an early access version of it and they are obviously still working on this device. But in my opinion, this re-trigger function should just mean that whenever you take a pattern, it would start from the start of that pattern, including the start of the bar count. So when we hear it here, it should start from whatever start that you have. Maybe I need to set a start somewhere in here. I don't think so. This shows the current bar position. There's not really a way to get an actual start in here, I believe. But that's okay. I'll try to figure out what the problem is there. And if there is an update on that, I'll leave a pinned comment below this video to see if there's a change that is made or an update that's made or an explanation on why this behavior is this way. So now we're basically done. We have something similar to this one. Obviously you spent a little bit more time on all of the other automations here, which you can see here. Uh, I spent some time drawing those in, but even here, I am using the mod wheel in this case to actually set a lot of the parameters, which are all of these here. You can see the bend and you can see some distortion in there as well, as well as this length here and another auxiliary, I think somewhere. The sixth parameter is this release here of this one, which is the, the envelope too. But if I play this here, you can hear that mod wheel at work doing its thing. You can hear how some of the notes sound a little bit more distorted and high-endy than some of the other notes. And that is again achieved through this setup here with the MIDI and the mod wheel. So overall, I would say this is a very powerful and a very creative tool because it's really, really fast and you don't have to go through that part of recording the, the melody and uh, finding out which parts you actually want to use and then rearranging everything. This is just a lot easier and simpler because it's in an interface and it just stays there the way that you want. So that's going to be the video for today. If you want to check out Stepic yourself, then I leave a link to it in the description down below. You can check it out and see if it's something for you. If you like these kind of videos where I kind of do a review and a, an explanation of how you use these tools, then let me know by leaving a like. If you have any questions or you have anything that you want to tell me, then you can leave a comment down below. Finally, if you're new here and you want to see more of my stuff, you can do so by subscribing and turning on bell notifications to get notified by YouTube. They will send you a little message or an email, whatever you have set up a notification whenever I upload something. So yeah, this is going to be the video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.